Sentence arrangement comes naturally to you in English. You know where each word belongs. But what about Arabic? Is it the same as English? Or does Arabic follow a different word arrangement in verbal sentences? Welcome back to Arabic with Amina. In this video, we'll learn how to form verbal sentences. Al-jumla, or the sentence in Arabic, is of two types. There's a nominal sentence, jumla ismiya, and a verbal sentence, jumla fi'liya. This video, we will be focusing on jumla fi'liya, as I already have another video covering the nominal sentences, which you can find in the corner above. Simply speaking, the jumla fi'liya, or the verbal sentence, is the sentence that starts with a verb. There are usually three components to the sentence. The verb, or fi'l, the subject, known as fa'il, and the object, known as maf'ul bih. The student wrote his homework. The fi'l is wrote. The subject would be the student. And the object would be his homework. A verb that requires all three components, the verb, subject, and object, or fi'l, fa'il, and maf'ul bih, is known as a transitive verb, or al-fi'l al-muta'addi. Not all verbs require all three, though. Some verbs only require a subject and not an object. For example, the sentence Ahmed left. The verb is left. The person who left is Ahmed, so he's the subject. We do not need an object in this sentence. This type of verb is known as the intransitive verb, or al-fi'l al-lazim. Let's talk a little bit more about al-fi'l al-lazim. It only requires two things, a fi'l, or verb, and a fa'l, the subject. For example, Amina safarat. The verb here is traveled, and the subject is Amina. Akhtafa rajul. The man disappeared. The verb here is akhtafa, and the subject is the man, or al-rajul. Now, Amina safarat is actually a nominal sentence, but for purposes to explain the intransitive verb, we included it here. Another example would be تَذْهَبُ فَاطِمَةً إِلَّا المدرسة. The subject here is Fatima. And the action she is performing, or the verb, is تذهب or goes. There's no object in this sentence. إلى المدرسة or to school the prepositional phrase. It is not an actual object. Because we're not saying the school. We are saying she went to school. To a place. Now let's talk a little bit more about الفعل المتعدي or the transitive verb. You remember what it is? It's the verb that requires a verb, subject, and object. For example, the student wrote his homework. The student is the subject, wrote is the verb, and his homework is the object. Constructing verbal sentences in English, we start with the subject first, the verb second, and the object third. This is the subject, verb, object, word arrangement. Let's see how the word arrangement is in Arabic. We have the same sentence. الطالب كتب واجبة طالب is the student. And so he is the subject or the فاعل. كتب is the فعل. واجبه his homework. Is the maf'ul bih, 
or the object. It has the same word arrangement as English. We started off with the subject, followed by the verb, followed by the object. However, Arabic word order is relatively flexible compared to English. We can rearrange the sentence and have the verb in the beginning. So starting off with the fa'il, followed by the fa'il or the subject, with the object or the maf'ul bih last. So the student wrote his homework, is how we would say in English. But in Arabic, we can say الطالب كتب واجبة with the same order as we would in English. Or we can have the verb come first and say كتب الطالب واجبة. Both of these word arrangements have the same meaning as the student wrote his homework. Let's go through a few other examples. شرب الطفل الحليب The child drank the milk. Let's first identify the verb, which is shariba or drank. The subject, fa'il. The person who drank, which is the child, al-tafl. And what did he drink? Al-halib. Making it maf'ulun bih, or the object. In this sentence, we started with the verb, followed by the subject. We can do the opposite starting with the subject followed by the verb. الطفلو شريب الحليب Our next sentence is زيد زيد يكتب رسالة إلى صديقه زيد is writing a letter to his friend. The verb in this sentence is writing or يكتب. The person writing this subject is Zaid. What he is writing, the object, or maf'ulun bih, is a letter, risalatan. Ila sadiqihi, to his friend, is a prepositional phrase, or shibh jumla in Arabic. I have another video talking about prepositions, so that is not the focus of today's video. In this sentence, we started with the subject, or the fa'il, which is Zayd. We can start with the verb and say, يَكْتُبُ زَيْد رِسَالَةً إِلَى صَدِيقِهِ Our next example is a little bit different. لَعِبْنَا كُرَةَ قَدَمْ We played football, or in American English, soccer. The verb here is played, which would be لَعِب in Arabic. The subject or the fa'il, the people who are playing ball, is we, which is the noon alif attached to the verb. And the object here in this sentence is football or kurata qadam. This verb has a pronoun attached to it, and the pronoun is the fa'il or subject. Pronouns can be attached to verbs, and they can function as the subject or the object sometimes. So in this example, we have the verb attached to the subject. We is attached to the verb played, so la'ibna. We cannot change the order of the sentence. We first have the verb followed by the subject, and we can't change it for the subject to come first because the subject is a suffix pronoun attached to the verb. Our final example, رأيتهم في السوق I saw them in the market. The verb here is sa, or رأي, or the رأي part of رأيتهم. Who is the person who saw? Who is the فاعل or subject? It is I, which in the sentence above رأيتهم في السوق, would be the ta part. This is ta al fa'il. Who did we see? The object or maf'ulun bih is them, which is hum. So we have one word that contains the verb, the subject, and the object. Ra'aytuhum, 
فسوق فسوق is again a prepositional phrase or شبه جملة Isn't it cool how you can have so many things attached to the verb in Arabic? Even if we were to remove the in the market part or فسوق and just said رأيتهم I saw them It's one word but has a huge meaning If you're feeling a little bit lost right here of how do I know of how do you attach these pronouns and suffixes to reflect the subject and object. I have a whole video explaining that topic and I break it down into easy steps to understand. Click on this video here to understand that lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to learn more Arabic. See you next time, Arabic with Amina.